Hello there. Today I watched the fourth episode of Secret Invasion and now I want to tell you about it. After the trap Gaia fell into last week, we see the aftermath of her execution, while Talos and Fury continue their operation against the Skrull extremists. This week, their mission sees Fury confront his wife Priscilla over her betrayal, and the two of them take on a mission to save a high-value target. There is also a surprise reveal about one of the characters. This episode was directed by Ali Selim and written by Kyle Bradstreet. Beloved sees the events of last week somewhat undone, and several new elements introduced into the mix. Character we've known and trusted turned out to be someone different than we thought, and there's a lot more to Gaia that meets the eye. The story for this episode was fun and captivating from start to finish, but doesn't make a whole lot of sense. The relationship between Fury and Priscilla is interesting with a lot of big emotions being thrown around, and the action sequence toward the end had a lot going on. There's also a good bit of tension between the villains and the heroes. Gravik makes for a decent villain because he actually gets his hands dirty himself and has cool powers. The problem with the story is that it's just too contrived in how everything plays out, and they manage to ruin any semblance of consequence in this episode. Fury and Talos only end up on this mission because someone else tried to get Priscilla to kill Fury. That person doesn't have a reason to kill Fury, and it's an extremely stupid move that puts him on Fury's radar instantly. It also somehow leads to Fury and Talos being in the right place at the right time. There was one too many coincidences to make everything happen, and it just felt like bad writing. As for the consequences, last week we saw Gaia shot in response to her betrayal. This week, they undo that decision with a rather hasty flashback. It wasn't well explained or set up, and it cheapened the whole story. Now I'm not sure that anyone who dies will actually stay dead, especially not the Skrull characters. They also made it clear that they will take the easy road if they forgot something and will just shoehorn it in later with a flashback. The majority of the screen time this week is spent with Sam Jackson as Nick Fury and Charlene Woodard as Priscilla. The two of them get into a big showdown conversation in which they lay everything out in front of them and address it. It's an emotional scene, with two longtime lovers relenting over the place they've come to, and it ends with a bang. Literally. Both Woodard and Jackson play the emotions beautifully, and I was so enthralled with the scene that I actually thought for a second that Nick might let her take him out. It was great storytelling and I can't wait to see where the two of them go from there. Jackson and Woodard have good chemistry together, and watching these two great actors battle it out for screen presence was amazing. Jackson looks great in the role, and seems born to play it. The way he changes his demeanor depending on who he's talking to and what he's trying to accomplish is a significant part of Fury's character, and Jackson has that chameleon vibe to him the whole time. Woodard plays loving wife that's had enough of Fury's nonsense, but can't bring herself to leave. The way she pushes back against him and beats him at his own game was so fun to watch, and that last look on her face was so forlorn. She's got a gift for physical reactions. Mendelssohn as Talos and Amelia Clark as Gaia also get to do an emotional scene, but it has a lot less impact than the other one. They play the emotions well, but their story isn't as fleshed out as Fury and Priscilla's, and their performance suffers for it. Don Cheadle also makes a bigger appearance in this episode as a guest star. He gets a bit of character development, but doesn't get to do much beyond being rude to Fury. Visually, this episode is quite aesthetically pleasing with its locations and features a significant action sequence toward the end. The drama sequences are shot straight with smooth, basic shots of the actors talking. They cut back and forth while the characters are speaking and do a good job of centering the emotions. The conversations take place in nice-looking locations like a church, a fancy hotel room, and a beautifully decorated house. All three look great and make for a dramatic setting. The action sequences in the second half saw a lot of random grunts being killed and lots of random explosions and gunfire. We see a few superpowers come out from Gravik and a few cool toys out of Fury's arsenal. It's a lot of fun. The visual journey isn't without flaws this week though. They messed up badly by having two different flashbacks that occurred simply to give context to the next scene. It felt cheap. The explanations weren't very good in them, and it left me as an audience member confused. The action sequence at the end is also a mess. It's never clear what's going on, or what's actually stopping Gravik and his men from just ending the president. There is this giant battle going on, but all we ever see is people getting shot, shooting, or random explosions. The action doesn't happen in a linear manner, and at times it's confusing how something came to be. Like when Gravik randomly appears in the group. Sound-wise, this episode doesn't make much of an impact. It does have instrumental tracks that play during most of the episodes. They come in extremely quietly and do follow the mood, but don't have much of an impact on the scenery. The songs tend to be soft, only made up of a few notes on one or two instruments, and they don't last very long. Just enough to color the atmosphere before moving on. They're all easily forgettable, and the only one that even came close to standing out was the choir song in the church. It was oddly fitting for the type of conversation they were having and gave the whole thing a creepy vibe, but it doesn't last long enough or play loud enough to have the impact it should. Overall, I enjoyed this episode. The writing is going a little off the rails this week, but the main story remains more or less intact. The missions that Fury and Talos go on are a little bit generic and boring, but the show makes up for it with captivating drama between the characters. Fury and Priscilla really stood out this week, and we got to see a bit of Gravik's hidden powers, which was really cool. The visuals were clean and pleasing to the eye, even if they didn't always make sense, and the soundtrack was nice even though it wasn't that effective. There's nothing new here, but it's a good episode. 6 out of 10. And remember, those are just my thoughts on the episode. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Bye bye